Hello and welcome to another Doctor Who related video. In today's Doctor Who related video, I'll be talking all things VorpCon related, which I attended on the 9th of September. Now, if you've noticed in Manchester, by the title, it says vlog slash retrospect. And I did film a bit of this event, um, but it was around about halfway throughout the day. I just stopped recording, uh, mainly because I just didn't want to bother people and just, you know, point a camera in their face. Um, so that's why, and I just wanted to just to enjoy the day, just to soak up the atmosphere and just enjoy socialising um, because that was the main reason for me going was to socialise with uh, good old JR and Reviews because when we were at LFCC we didn't really get a chance to have a chat and talk um, so that was the main reason on going um, so enjoy the footage and I will insert clips um, and photos when I'm talking about said section but enjoy the sort of intro to this vlog and some footage of VORP itself which Good morning and welcome to a vlog. Today I will be vlogging a doctor convention called VORP which is happening on the 9th of September in Manchester and I've got to be honest this is a very late thing for me to go to. I literally booked my ticket last week um, when they had like only a couple tickets left um, so I thought I'd go and it seems like a very good event, it seems like a nice quiet event uh, with lots of things going on, lots of panels and the ticket price is quite worth it. I think it's like £22, you get a load of free stuff and a free autograph of it. And an autograph for about, what, 10, 15, 20 quid? So, you know, it's worth it just for that alone. Um, so hopefully meeting up with JR can Reviews and uh, we're going to be vlogging it throughout the day, our day in Manchester. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's go. Cause it Printworks in Manchester in front of this lovely Dalek prop. With our new friend. Which we shall call Dilbert. Dilbert. Uh, so yeah, let's see what today's got in store for us. And off Dilbert went on his travels to probably exterminate some locals. So upon arrival with your entry ticket, you were given some lovely things. So you're given basically a schedule, the layout of the building and the sort of times for the photo shoots, lovely. And then you were given this little bit of a program to tell you what was on each stage. So the Hartnell stage there and the Troughton stage and the Pertwee stage. You're also given this lovely print um, of the sort of event poster, which was a really nice addition and quite a nice thing to include. And my personal favourite thing, what you were given, was this, a lanyard, um, which basically, again, has the same poster of the event there, and it's a companion pass, and it says Warp 2018. So I thought that was quite a nice little addition for the event. So what were my first impressions of Warp itself? Well, I thought it was rather odd, I'm gonna be honest, it was like something out of Harry Potter because it was literally uh, a Diagon Alley with full of pubs and nightclubs and a cinema, uh, which you'll see from the footage of the Dalek Dilbert going down. Um, so it was just really odd because literally you'd go into a bar and there would be Colin Baker and Paul McGann, which was quite nice in a way because there'd be in these little booths and it was quite an intimate experience meeting those people in that way. But I'll get on to the downside of that in a minute. Um, but yeah, it was just really bizarre in the sense that you would go into a sort of club and you would go down these stairs and there would be a Doc 2 panel. So it was just really bizarre. So once me and Jarka and Views got our bearings, uh, we bumped into some lovely people who recognised us, which was lovely. Uh, so we bumped into Ice Lord 99, uh, Sean, who does the wonderful first Doctor impression, and Adam, Time Lord Fishwick. So it was great to talk uh, to them about Doctor Who and you know about YouTube channels and all that kind of thing. So it was just wonderful. Um, and yeah, I just want to say a massive thank you to those guys. I also want to say a massive thank you to people who uh, stopped and said hello, because um, that was really great to meet people who watch these videos. Um, so it was just wonderful. And it was really great to, you know, to hear people's responses to the John Pertwee video, what I did a couple of months ago, uh, because like I said, that video is one of the most special and the most dearest videos I will ever put out on YouTube. So it was great to get such lovely feedback and it was really heartwarming. So it was just really heartwarming to know that people what you know, I care enough about my YouTube channel to you know say hi and you know what a photo. So I just found that really great. So yeah, massive thank you to everyone who stopped by and had a chat with me because it was just really heartwarming and just makes YouTube really worth doing when you meet lovely people like those and just get such lovely feedback. So it was just great. So thank you very much to all of you. So after that lovely meeting, me and JR Reviews thought, right, let's go and find some merch to buy. 
Um, and to be honest, there wasn't that much um, in terms of merchandise. So I think there was only two stalls. There was one full of merchandise and the other was basically Phantom selling bits of their merchandise. Um, but the main merchandise store was by the cinema where the photo shoots were. Um, where you'll see the TARDIS with the 10th Doctor spacesuit. Um, I personally didn't buy any merchandise um, because I just wanted to focus on getting autographs in the vault. Um, but the figures, they were they were quite expensive. Certain things were, I think, like the Patrick Troughton and Dalek was about £60, where you can get that on eBay for about £20. Um, but JR Reviews did get some lovely bargains, um, which I'm sure you'll see in his video when he does his. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to focus on the vault um, because there were quite a few books and some miscellaneous items what I hadn't seen before. Um, so yeah, they had quite a nice selection of merchandise just in that one store. And that's when we bumped into the Five Who fans, which was very surreal meeting them because obviously they are very prolific in terms of uh, YouTube, in terms of Doctor related stuff. Um, and of course me and JR Reviews Views um, did collar Chris Johnson, um, who we are a big fan of because we grew up with watching him on CBBC because he's one of the presenters. And we talked about Nine is Ten. Um, if you haven't listened to his podcast, literally celebrating 10 years, of the Ninth Doctor in Series 1. It was just wonderful talking about Series 1 to him because obviously he is a massive fan of it because obviously he did a whole podcast dedicated to it. And if you followed my channel, and I, like I said in my LFCC video, you know, Series 1 is just one of the best series of Doctor of all time. And plus it was my first series, so I've got natural soft spot for it. So it was great to talk about that and obviously uh, his recent project, what he's doing, um, basically marathoning Doctor Who uh, from William Hartnell right up until, I guess, Jodie Whittaker. Um, so it was quite nice to talk about that project and how he's getting on marathoning that because some episodes he hasn't seen yet and obviously uh, he's with somebody who hasn't seen Classic Who before. So around this point it was about one o'clock and me and J.R. Reeves wanted to see a panel which was basically called The Celestial Toymakers. No surprise what that was about. It was about Doctor Who figures throughout the years and obviously we're both massive fans of the Doctor Who figures so we thought, yeah, let's go. We might get some exclusive news about upcoming figures. Sadly, that didn't happen. And sadly, that didn't happen. The panel just didn't happen at all. Um, and that's one thing I'll cover in the sort of negative side of VORP itself. Um, so me and Jericho Ruse went down to have a wander to, you know, get to the stage, find a seat. And what panel did we arrive at? And we arrived at the K9 panel. K9 Timequake. You know that film, what was supposed to happen with K9 last year? Yeah, that, that film. What just never happened? Well, I've got some footage from that panel, so. I was very keen to keep Omega looking very much like Omega in the Three Doctors as opposed to the um, Baked Alaska from our Ark in Space. Not Ark in Space, Ark in Infinity. There's a lot of songs as well, but the main thing is that we're going to plan to use new monsters, new characters, so they all fit within k own new. That's something, isn't it? K9 is doing all right for himself, isn't he? He's got two TV series coming out and he's got a film. So if you love the Australian K9 and who doesn't? He's, he's getting a series, which... Woo! I'm really not enthusiastic for this. I haven't even watched the Australian K9. I just know it's bad and... And Omega doesn't really look like Omega. So after that panel had ended, uh, we bumped into Ethan, aka Sea Devil Lagoon, who does the mechanoid attack system. And we also bumped into uh, Sean Mozzie, who does the wonderful trailers. Um, and we literally spent the whole day with those guys. And honestly, a massive thank you to those, because literally they welcomed me with open arms, because James had already spoken to Ethan before, and was, we were going to meet up at uh, LFCC. And we just didn't, because obviously time and, and that kind of thing. Um, so it was great to actually meet them and actually have a chat and just, they were so welcoming. Um, so I just want to say a massive thank you to those two guys because they honestly were super nice and were just really incredibly welcoming and just welcomed me with open arms. So at this point in the day we thought, you know what, let's go and get some autographs. So we got in line and I say line, I'll talk about that in my concluding thoughts before. Um, to go meet Katie Manning um, because J. Arkham Reviews or James uh, hadn't met Katie Manning so I was like, you know what, you're in for a treat because it's good old Katie Manning um, and the line just stopped because she had to go and do a panel and wasn't going to come back until So while we waited four. for Katie Manning I thought, you know what, I'm going to meet Stephen Fawn who obviously played Azal and Omega and an Ogron uh, Quite a wide variety of characters there So here we have my Stephen Fawn autograph 
Um, I will say this, there wasn't that much choice of prints to get signed, this was literally the only print they had. Um, and I think most guests only had the one print, I think Katie Manning kicked off about the selection of photos she had because she liked variety. Um, but yeah, I think Peter Davison brought his own prints, but yeah, most guests only had just the one print to sign. Um, but yeah, Stephen Form was great because obviously he's very iconic to the Third Doctor era. And it's great to meet somebody else from the Third Doctor era. So I asked him, you know, about playing Omega and Azar, what differences there were with that in terms of performance. And he told me quite an interesting story about playing Omega in the sense that literally he rehearsed without the mask. And literally on the day of recording um, the episode, he got the, the big old mask there. Um, so that was quite fascinating because he sort of talked about the performance in terms of he didn't want to come across comical. Um, so he had to try and find the balance of being, you know, serious and not coming across comical or comedic. So it's quite interesting to sort of talk about that and obviously the, the voice. So that was quite interesting. And obviously Azal, I asked about the makeup and costume, was that kind of a hindrance? And he said it was an absolute nightmare. So that was quite a nice chat with him. Um, so yeah, wonderful stuff. Born. Really nice to meet Stephen So the next Ford. person I met was John Leeson, who obviously played K9. Uh, so it was wonderful to meet K9 um, again, because I did meet John Leeson and Sophie Aldred at Birmingham Comic Con and that was the first sort of Comic Con thing I did and some of the first Doctor people I met and I was just too scared to get a photo of them to ask for a photo um, so I thought I'd rectify that and get the vault signed and get a photo of them so that's exactly what I did I um, had a good old chat about Big Finish with John Leeson about the Tom Baker stuff so found out some very interesting stuff involving Tom Baker and Lala Ward which I'm not going to say but it was certainly an interesting thing to discover and uh, John Leeson is a massive fan of the John Dorney um, Fourth Doctor stories, what he does. So that was great um, to sort so of hear that. So the next person I met was, of course, Sophie Aldred, who played Ace. Again, much like Birmingham, I just wanted to get a photo and the vault sign, so I actually did that. And we obviously we talked about Big Finish. And Sophie Aldred is super nice and super lovely. She's one of the great Doctor Who guests you can meet. And she's just so enthusiastic about the show. It's just absolutely wonderful. And obviously we talked all things about Big Finish, about the Hex and the, obviously the Ace and Mel stuff. Uh, so yeah, it was really great to talk to about that. So the next person I met was Colin Baker, because um, I was going to meet Nicola Bryan, um, because obviously I haven't met Nicola Bryan before, and um, before, because Colin Baker's there, you know what, I'll get him to sign his page of the vault as well. Um, so that's exactly what I did, and I have to say, um, this was the second time meeting Colin, and I have to say he was much better on the second time, I think he was in a really good mood, he was smiling, laughing at the things I was saying, um, because obviously we talked about Big Finish, so I talked about the Jago and Lightfoot stuff and how he really enjoyed it in the last adventure we talked about the different companions he's had um, you know so we had a good you know three or four minute conversation about Big Finish and talked about the Sideman release how he hasn't listened to it yet and he's heard you know very good feedback about it and he hasn't recorded a Big Finish since so that's quite interesting um, but yeah it was great to meet Colin so and of course I've got Colin a photo of him I did meet Nicola Bryant and this is the first time I met Nicola Bryant um, and obviously I've got the vault signed which you would have seen earlier on in the video um, but yeah, she was super lovely. We talked about the Perry trilogy, the older Perry stuff, you know, with um, Widow's Assassin, Masters of Earth and the Rani Elite and how much she just really enjoyed that trilogy and just really loved the Widow's Assassin. And we talked about Perry and the Piscon Paradox, um, which, you know, thought Colin Baker was absolutely hilarious within that. And she was just really nice. And I did get some information about her um, involving Big Finish, which I'm not going to say what information that is because it hasn't been announced yet. Um, but yeah, it's pretty exciting. After that, it was basically time to say goodbye. Uh, so it was absolutely wonderful spending the day with Ethan and Sean and meeting TARDIS Monkey and, and Matt and obviously meeting some subscribers, you know, Icelord99, uh, Adam Time Lord Fishwick. And so it was Sean. absolutely wonderful meeting all of you. Um, but a massive thank you has to go to JR Arkham Reviews, um, obviously James, who we do the Nightfalls podcast. There you go. Um, you know, literally being my guide around Manchester. Otherwise, I probably would have ended up somewhere completely different. So it was absolutely wonderful uh, spending time and actually having a chat with you. It was absolutely wonderful just to socialise and just have a good old natter about Doctor Who. So it was absolutely wonderful that was. And off we went to Manchester Piccadilly and went our separate ways. So yeah, that was basically Vorp. Um, so what are my concluding thoughts on the event? Well, I thought as an event goes, and this was the first ever Vorp Con, I thought it was great. I thought it was a really great first attempt, but there were there were problems, as you would expect, because this is their first, you know, they had problems with the mics, because I think certain stages only had the one mic, and especially when you're doing a big panel, you want everybody to have a mic, but as it kind of breaks the rapport. Uh, the queuing system I found just really bizarre, because literally, it was a free-for-all, it was literally, you know, you were asking people, are you in the queue for so-and-so? But like, no, like, okay, where do I where do I queue? So it was it literally, I think they need to sort out the queuing system, you know, where 
wears wear and I think that they need to sort of set a limit on people who go to VORP um, in itself in the sense that literally I was only expecting it to be what 300, 400 people turns out there was a thousand people there so it was quite compact in that sense and it was just you know trying to navigate yourself around there trying to get the things you wanted to do um, and obviously meeting certain guests you just didn't know where they were because they were all in these different areas it was just impossible to find everybody you wanted to meet um, the panels were another thing the panels like I said about the mic issue but if one thing went out of line in terms of panels so if one panel was delayed the whole schedule was out of the window literally you know uh, the first panel with the 8th Doctor, literally Paul McGann was late and the panel I think was about half an hour late and as soon as Paul McGann arrived within that happening he had to go and do photo shoots and the whole panel left because you know they were having photos of Paul McGann and I thought it was great that Vorp tried to include every guest that every guest had a panel um, so I thought that was really nice but I think that they need to think okay um, can we do the panels a bit later on in the day so maybe you know an hour into the event instead of doing it straight into the event um, but other than that I thought it was a really great event I thought it was a nice friendly atmosphere and it was just great spending the day with Doctor Who fans so yeah I really did enjoy VORP I believe there is going to be another VORP um, con in the near future and there's going to be a first Doctor one which does sound pretty tempting and I am tempted by the first Doctor one they're doing um, so that was VORP, that was VORP 2018 um, so if you went I hope you had a brilliant time and if you didn't and you want to go to VORP, I definitely recommend it because I'm sure when they do the next one, all the problems they had with the first one will be hopefully gone. Uh, so yes, that concludes this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. So thank you very much and bye bye.